Imagine this. You're online looking at funny cat memes when an ad pops up telling you about a great deal on a vacation rental in the Maldives. It appears random at first, but then you recall telling a friend on Facebook how much you wanted to go to the Maldives for your honeymoon. Odd, right? Going back to the early days of the World Wide Web, between 1990 and 2004, you could think of the internet as more of a library for people to look up websites and read the information on them in text or image format. This was the Web 1.0, or read-only era, where only a few people could create hard-coded HTML static pages for users to view content, and where to move from one page to the next, users would click on hyperlinks. But that was about it. Moving on from the read-only web came the read-write web, or Web 2.0, which is the internet we all know today. Things are much more complex now, with the most noticeable distinction being the interactive nature of Web 2.0. Users now interact with other web users at will through blog comments, posting images on Instagram, or creating video content on YouTube. Going back to our Maldives example, you'll find that to participate in Web 2, users are typically required to create accounts and agree to the terms of service for websites like Amazon, Facebook, or Google. By doing this, these companies now have the permission to collect troves of users' personal information that can be used in a myriad of ways to profit off of, such as being sold to third parties for targeted advertising. This is the privacy and data ownership issue plaguing today's internet, and one of the main reasons for transitioning to Web 3.0. So what is Web 3.0 exactly? Web 3.0 is the next version of the World Wide Web, characterized by a move from centralized web services to a decentralized web of data that can be accessed on demand by users and where users are in full control of their own data. Web 3.0 plans to use blockchain technology and other technologies like artificial intelligence to create a read-write-own web. Here, there won't be a need for centralized servers. Instead, websites will run on peer-to-peer -peer networks distributed across several computers worldwide. An example is the Brave browser. Instead of target advertising, Brave is implementing a basic attention token, BAT, that will allow users to earn tokens in exchange for viewing ads. There are also lending and borrowing applications like Aave or gaming Web 3.0 applications where users earn tokens through a play-to-earn model. Because of the way blockchain technology works, the internet will become a place where users can access various applications that no single entity controls through trustless, permissionless models and by using tokens and cryptocurrencies for trading assets. What do you think the future of Web 3.0 will be? We'd love to know your thoughts.